the Daytona 500, the Super Bowl of stock car racing. Every February since 1959, over 100 of the world's best drivers come together to compete for just one of 43 starting positions and a shot at the one and a half million dollar purse. But this year, there's something different. Standing out from the pack is the driver of car number 58, the legendary James Hilton. At 72, he's still running wide open, racing is in his blood, and he has no plans to stop. So you may ask, after 40 years of championships and checkered flags, why on earth would he still want to qualify for the Daytona 500? And more importantly, who in their right mind would finance him? James had always wanted to return to Daytona, but at 72, the odds were against him until he got a surprise from a childhood friend. I, I don't even know the morning or the day we met, but being next door neighbors and, and growing up, uh, somehow we met with families somewhere there uh, we were just next door neighbors. They've known each other for almost 60 years. And even though life has taken these two from Yellow Mountain Road on completely different paths, country musician J.C. Weaver and race car driver James Hilton are still close friends. I knew James from early age where we grew up in the mountain, Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia on Yellow Mountain Road. And, and I can remember how we'd dress and the way we were taught. Uh, our parents were very strong, making sure the things we did, you had to do right. And James and his family, they cut hay for everybody in the neighborhood. And they had large barns that they would stack hay in. And we were in the sawmill business, my daddy was, and we would always connect and come together and had fun. Good morning. Good morning, He got interested in racing, I think, from the story that he's told me was when he was in the third grade and he heard a motorcycle outside. And, and uh, he, he got up and went to the windows to look at the motorcycle. And he heard those engines cranking up and uh, and the teacher told him to sit down, and, uh, and I think the, that he just stood there watching this motorcycle, and I think she gave him a paddling on the hand or something, and he started from there just at a very early age. James and J.C. always had a lot of fun, but they didn't always have a lot of money. I can remember going to the races where we'd hide underneath the, the, with the tools in the car, and then they would go, go through it. We'd be under the canvas to go into the racetrack, and we'd get in free. That's the way we got in. I had to build my race car in the barn, part of the barn, at night. And we usually worked at 11 o'clock, so I worked many at 3 o'clock in the morning. Finally got it together, didn't have any way to haul it. JC had a truck, and uh, so he loaded it up on the, went to the race, and uh, the dirt track, and uh, being the expert driver that I was, you know, immediately got in trouble and turned the thing over and it caught on fire, and uh, JC came to the rescue with his brand new, he had a brand new suede jacket, used that to put the fire out with, <laughs> and even today, he still wants me to buy him a suede jacket. So that's how we first went racing together. And then after that, like you said, we'd hide in the trunk, climb the fence, do whatever we had to do to go race. This country music singer and NASCAR driver have been a team on the track for over 40 years. But for them, the days of having to sneak into races are over. Yellow Mountain Road, Yellow Mountain Road. Seventy-two-year-old James Hilton 
is attempting to be the oldest driver to compete in the Daytona 500. Today's Gatorade duel is his last chance. It didn't begin well for Hilton. After a bad start, a blown clutch, and a pit penalty, he was in last place and down one lap. Amazingly, he fought his way to second place and holds eighth. We're currently on a caution flag, and if James can hold his place, he'll earn his spot in the Daytona 500 and in history. Same thing, race his way into the 500, and here sits my old buddy. <laughs> you know, Richard Childress, since he got out of the driver's seat, not only has he made a lot of drivers famous, as uh, here's Hilton, his first race, won $100. And that was driving for Ned Jarrett, actually. Hey, yes. I told the story on one of our practice shows. He got in the car to get starting money. And because Ned thought, because it was a road course, he might just keep racing around. They towed the cars on an open trailer then, put a locking gas cap on Hilton's car, and the key was in Ned's pocket. So when he came in for fuel, he couldn't get it. He had to park the car. <laughs> he knew James would run all day if he could. But you know, I spent a little bit of time talking to James Hilton down here at the test in January. And you know, you could see the grin behind his full face helmet. It's like he told me, he said, Larry, I know it's a long shot making the Daytona 500, but you know what? I'm having fun and I'm enjoying myself. There's a uh, Hilton's pit in these final six laps. James Harvey got him a good restart there. He's keeping up. Sauter's looking underneath him going into one here. Get in, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. Get down! That could be bad news for James. Somebody get in with us. Keeping him to the high side. He's There's the race down. right there. That's the race right there for the transfer. Michael Walter moves into second transfer spot. Ahead of Boris said. Yeah, once James got up out of the draft, uh, he's pretty well done. James went from 8th to 23rd in one turn. How could that happen? In a split second, the 70 cars fender gains a couple of inches on James's bumper. And just that fast, James is out of the draft. And in the Hilton pit. Oh, we got out. a car around. It's Ward Burton. Up the hill he goes. Look out, James Harvey. Caution will fly. James manages to avoid the wreck, but this time, the caution works against him. The race restarts, but with only three laps left, there's no time to catch up. After coming so close, Daytona slips away. people get a shot at their dreams. The little boy with his eyes fixed out the window, who became the 72-year-old with his eye fixed on Daytona. James Hilton has lived his racetrack dream his whole life, whether or not he has a starting position in the 500. People don't achieve their dreams alone. I think the traits that made the man James Hilton was his daddy and the type of living and driving those old case tractors. He learned a lot about racing, I think, driving a case tractor in, in the mountains because that's what they did every day. What is friendship? You know, when you think about it, uh, can you buy it? I don't think so. You might. You might think you can buy it. You might spend a lot of money. As soon as your money's gone, where's that friend? With JC and I growing up together, we were kids together. We, you know, we played little kiddies and come on up. That's our friendship. It's an ongoing friendship. And like I say, you can't even put a price on it. And say a million dollars. It, it's a uh, friendship is there for life. And, We'll be friends till the end, no doubt about it. From a place called Yellow Mountain Road to the track at Daytona, what started out over a cup of coffee 
has ended up as the adventure of a lifetime between two old friends. James's hope of being the first 72-year-old at Daytona may have been lost, but there's always 73.